Welcome back, book fiends, to Wicked Good Books, a channel dedicated to books and things book adjacent. My name is Nick, and I'm the host of this channel. Since it's June, not only is it my wife and I's birthdays, but it is also Pride Month. Uh, I am blessed and grateful to be uh, part of this community through my best friend and through my wife. So we figured to put this video together and talk about some Pride-related content that we really dig. Give me the clear content, please. Uh, I'm going to be leaning more towards books, as this channel is about books and book adjacent. Uh, though I do love film and TV, video games, and all sorts of things, I figured... While I had Lisa here for a little bit longer, I'd have her talk about some things that she is passionate about and some content in the LGBTQ plus community that she's really digging lately. So that's what this video is gonna be about. Before I get into my list of books here, uh, I wanted Lisa to talk about some things that she's been digging. Um, before that though, what would you say, uh, out of all the things you're gonna talk about, whether it be books, film, TV, uh, icons online, uh, people in magazines, essays, um, what, of all the suggestions that you want to you know, give out here uh, on Wicked Good Books to talk about for Pride Month, what would you say was the most influential um, for you at the start of your journey? No pressure. No pressure. Um, the most influential, I would say, I mean, there's a lot of representation in the media today, some good, some not so good. Um, but I would say, like, early on, had I known had little Lisa known then what she knows now about how accepting her friends and family would be, um, I probably would have come out a long time ago. I was actually at Dory, it was at Full Sail when I discovered it. When I discovered, um, I found, I think on, I don't know, it was probably through Tumblr. Um, <laughs> oh, Tumblr. Uh, I discovered the web series Carmilla, which is like a modern adaptation of Sheridan Le... How do we say it? Sheridan Le Fanu? Yes. Le Fanu. H him. Uh, it was an adaptation of his book, Carmilla. Um, and it's just like a modern take on it. And the creators, most of the actors, um, are all part of the LGBTQ plus community. So it was just really nice to see um, stuff like that being produced on the internet. And I was watching it and I was like, it just helped me become more comfortable with that. I think I just watched it and I was just like, oh, it's like more normalized because I feel like it just, I don't know, it was very, it was, it was easy to watch. It made me feel comfortable. It made me feel a little bit seen that like, as I started watching more content that was LGBTQ plus, I think my, especially my mom, she started noticing that I was like watching <laughs> a lot more like queer content. And like, I, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a big deal when I told her, but she just was like, I think she just kind of knew because I just started watching a lot more <laughs> queer content. That's fair. I think to be, being tied to what you were studying and what we were studying in school. Yeah. Um, it li linked together your personal and your professional um, worlds really well too. I remember you were talking about that series, trying to get me to watch it. Um, I hadn't even known about the story of Carmilla until recently. Um, on my list, I'll be talking about St. Gibson's Diary of Blood for a minute. And uh, not that they're directly related, but they're both vampire uh, stories. And uh, Carmilla is super interesting. It's like one of the first vampire stories before Bram Stoker's Dracula. And it's a female, female uh, story and a female ra vampire. So pretty cool. Um, if you haven't checked that one out, add it to your list. It's pretty, pretty grim, um, but some good stuff. But that makes total sense to me. That's where the things would have started for you, especially while we were in school. Yeah, that was around the same time I had um, read well, Carol had come out. Yeah, I remember. That was it. That was a big deal for me when Carol came out, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I even read the book *The Price of Salt*, um, and that was that was a big thing for me. Like that was almost like the awakening. Do you remember the author for *Price of Salt*? Uh, Patricia Highsmith. Okay. Which? Do they base the script off that? Like, like, is it a perfect adaptation or inspired by? Um, it's really, really close. Uh, like, they changed like a couple things. Um, in the sense of like what Remar's character Therese does as her profession. She's a photographer in the movie, which I liked better in the book. She was a um, like a set like a set designer mm -hmm. for like plays and stuff like that. Um, so they changed like that. But honestly, other than that, most of it was pretty much I would say spot on. That's all. I love but they like just changed they just changed like little details, but the base of the story was there. I mean, you really vibe it out. That was your, the year of Rooney Mara for you. I think. That was the year of Rooney Mara. It's still the year of Rooney Mara. I was going to say that, that it's year. It's still the year of Rooney Mara. It's been a five-year year, <laughs> single year. 
So um, on your list of things you've been digging that are that are related to uh, Pride Month and related to the LGBTQ plus community, um, what would you say? What, what do you want to talk about first? You want to talk about books? Do you want to talk about TV, music? I'm mean, gonna just talk about it all. Yeah. Oh, all of the gay stuff. <laughs> uh, well, last time I was on your channel, I did mention Fletcher. You as, did. As that was, I mean, I'm still big on Fletcher right mm -hmm. now, but I know I was like really big on her back then. Um, <laughs> I mentioned her in the last video that you guys should check her out. I will continue saying that here. You should check, uh, should check she her out. Good. She's really great. Before we get into more book related um, content, I would say uh, one of the more important things that is new that I have recently discovered um, is there's a YouTuber named Shannon Beverage. She's been working with a company called Storyblock where she has been creating um, queer stock footage or queer based stock footage um, for people like me, like videographers who want to portray LGBTQ plus relationships in their work. Um, working for an advertising agency, we use stock footage all the time. So I personally had never found that it was hard to find stock footage that portrayed that. Um, but one of the reasons that she was doing it and she talked about was she was doing a music video um, and she found it really hard to just find basic representation. So she decided to partner with them to create story, uh, stock footage for LGBTQ plus couples. And I thought that was really great. That's really awesome, especially with so much uh, this past year, seeing so many new content creators, not just in the booktube or book adjacent communities, but just all YouTube and, and Vimeo and, and, and Tumblr, Twitter, everything, all, all these new creators coming out and using new content and using new media resources. It's awesome to start seeing stuff like that to, to give people more options to use and, and more tools at their disposal. So yeah. I, really, I really dig that. Yeah, I mean, I've been following her channel for a really long time. Um, and she's always been very inspiring to me, uh, especially since I went to we went to film school and stuff like that. Seeing what she's been doing um, has always been really inspiring. But then I saw her create a uh, partner with Storyblocks, and it was just really cool. Yeah, I'll put really some cool. links down below too to um, Storyblocks and Shannon Beverage's page too. You guys, check it out. But uh, you've been a fan of that YouTuber for a long time now, mm -hmm. I think, and I feel like uh, among the many different uh, avenues you explore when it comes to entertainment and media, um, aside from YouTube, because I know how much you love it, uh, not just books either, but I know you really dig a lot of great uh, TV and movie, that's, that's kind of our thing, mm -hmm. um, that's what we bond over the most, that's what we how we met. Um, so let's talk about some TV and, and shows and, and some movies that you really dig that you feel like um, either speak to you on a personal level or you feel like would speak to the community or that you feel like people coming into the community or wanting to know more about it or to get more involved and understand better and be a better listener um what are some suggestions that you have or, or just something that you personally do well as you're well aware as i've also gotten your wife on too is my personal favorite winona earp <laughs> she trained, yeah. um i I like that show because there's just a lot of um, representation in that show, but it's done in a way that doesn't make us feel tokenized. Like they never call it out in a way that like they it's like forced upon you. It's just there. It's natural. It's um, I think it's portrayed well. Um, I think that they really did justice for especially uh, Waverly and Nicole's characters. You know, I feel like a lot of times you'll see. Um, queer characters and always one of the partners dies or there's like some some s dumb tragic tragic thing that happens and you're just like it's like why 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 did that have to happen so I, one of the things that I loved about Winona Earp was that we had it all the way till the end and it was chef's kiss, chef's kiss. <laughs> that's uh Winona Earp is a sci-fi channel show I believe I think, I think it's a sci-fi channel original yeah um long lasting too with some great special effects great writing um, I don't know if they ever came out with written material. I, I want to say they came out with comics. They, they did. Well, I could be wrong. I'll have to check. It. I have to look into it. But. There is a comic. I just don't remember. I don't remember if the comic came out before or after the mm. show. That's a really good one. Um, I, I think shows like that, shows like Star Trek Discovery, for me, is a big one. Um, that that show is just chock full of representation, and they do it in such a beautiful way that doesn't feel. Uh, forced or tokenized or like it's being done for the wrong reasons I feel like they really uh, come at it in a sincere genuine but also super informative um, in normalized way at the same time uh, but I really dig it it's one of my favorite shows and uh, if you haven't started watching it season four I think comes out in a 
few more months. I'm dying to see it, so definitely you're going to catch up on. That one's on Paramount+, Plus, but uh, there's some great written material for that as well. I have a couple on my shelf, and uh, there's some just amazing characters and amazing uh, LGBTQ plus representation in that show, and I feel like um, it's a great place to start for people that want to learn more, uh, or even to be uh, for straight folks wanting to be better listeners. I feel like it's a great uh, outlet for that first um, stepping stone. So being as avid film and TV buffs as you and I tend to be, just loving all things film, movie, uh, TV, video games, uh, books, um, comics, graphic novels, anime, manga, um, all these different parts of media, what do you think, if any, is the strongest um, resource to, to go to for this content? Or do you think lately all of it has kind of come together and um, just been kind of hitting the marks uh, across the board for um, representation and inclusion. I feel like, I feel like they've all kind of come together pretty well. Um, I haven't unfortunately read as many books that had LGBTQ plus representation in it. Um, so based off of my experience, I would say, you know, uh, movies and TV uh, has good representation and everything like that. but. I feel like also a lot of it is a lot of adap adaptation, so like it comes from books. That's true. Um, so between that, but then we also see in music, there's a ton of artists out there who are, um, you know, becoming more comfortable coming out or already are out and just giving us a lot of really great content to see whether it's across music, books, movies, television. Why do you think, and this is more just like my own curiosity, why do you think the arts, you know, in terms of books, movies, TVs, games, things of that nature, why do you think those things um, make great outlets for people in this community outside and in? Um, I think because it's just... Art is always something that allows you to express who you are in exactly who you are. Like, you can, whether you're a painter, you're a singer-songwriter, whether you're a writer, you're an actor, it gives you a medium to just be and just express yourself and I think that that's why people gravitate towards it whether or not you're part of the community or not whether you're just anybody people like art because I think it just allows you to feel emotion and have emotion and express that emotion um, so I think that that's also just such a huge part for the LGBTQ plus community because it gives us a voice and it gives us a face which I love out of all that content we've kind of talked about so far um whether it be books, TV shows, uh, movies, games, anime, manga, um, what content would you like to see more of? Um, not necessarily what's been lacking, one that you dig the most, and just what, what would you like to see more of from one of those things? The best way to answer that is I want to see them portrayed better in all of the mediums, where I feel like a lot of the times we'll see them where they are tokenized. You know, there's always the gay best friend or you know, they, they always make it, like, a point to, like, push that on people, um, which is good, but also not in the sense where it's like, I'm, I'm glad that they're speaking about it. I'm glad that they're there. I'm glad that it is an aspect of the show or book or um, whatever. I just don't like when it's, like, used as a gimmick, and I hope to see in you know the future and the coming media that like it's portrayed better i one of the best examples that i think that has happened recently is in promising young woman her like best friend and boss is laverne cox and in the movie there is no mention of her being trans of her being a trans woman and i think that it was just really nice to see them have her be on screen just as a woman, because that's what she is. So I think that that was just like a great way, a great example of what I'm talking about. It's just nice to have them be on screen and have them be normalized and not have to be used as like a token. Cause yeah, and I think like that's the way a lot of media is going. Um, I've been seeing a lot in uh, video games, especially. I know we both really bond over Last of Us. It's one of our favorite games and uh, one of our favorite on-screen couples, Ellie yes. and Dina. Yeah. I love them so much. And um, that was, I loved being able to play that game and then have you play it and kind of bond over it and talk about it. Um, it's one of my favorite games of all time. Some of my favorite characters. 
and uh, I would love if they just, you know, I know there's an HBO show coming out um, based on the games. I'm just really excited to see how much they include. Um, there's a lot of progressive themes, a lot of dark stuff happening in that show, but there's a lot of great progressive uh, character work that's done in that game. And I'm just really hoping and excited to see that content brought to life on the screen for, for viewers who haven't played the game or aren't familiar with it, um, just to see. I, I think that's also, like, that's another great example. Like, they don't, like, Ellie just is yeah. a lesbian. Like, they don't ever, like, force that upon it. It's just It's just there. That's part of her character, her character as yeah. something. It's not like they have to go into, like, a huge thing about it and be like, and give her a moment of her, you know, awful coming out or anything like that. That it just, that was an aspect of it. And I remember, I think I told you about it, and I think you missed it, is in Last of Us 2, when you're in Seattle, there's a moment where you can go through, you're going, you know, you're running through all the- video store? No, no, it's not a video store. There's a moment where uh, you're, you're running from the wolves and you go to hide in one of the buildings and there's a door that is locked. And if you open it up, like clickers come out. But after you kill all the clickers and you go through the door, it's uh, a pride shop. <laughs> and like there's like they have like the pride rainbow painted on like, there's like that the that rainbow that one. yeah there's like a rainbow crosswalk um and then there's just like a full store and like there's like a <laughs> book that says like the big book of gay and like all of this stuff there's like that. a so there's fun. like a lesbian flag that's like all there um and i just thought that was like a really cool thing that they put in the game i'm excited to see how they translate that to the show and if they ever do written material um, I think it'll make a great book too. Yeah. On the topic of books, I feel like this year has been a big year for me reading uh, LGBTQ plus content. Not even technically on purpose, I've just been gravitating towards it lately. And I've noticed that that's kind of found its way into all the media that I enjoy and I love. One of them being books. And uh, like I was saying, I, I was looking at the past 25 or so books that I've read and I'm like, wow, they're <laughs> I've just been reading a lot of LGBTQ plus books. Even when I go to the... Um, the bookstore and they have like you know they do like the section now they have oh lgbtq plus section here's all the books that you know are in this community which i think is a cool way to to showcase it a little bit um i'm not sure that it hurts or helps the normalizing of it but it is kind of cool that they showcase the books and make it like right out there for you yeah no i mean it's, it's great that they do that because it's nice that they are showcasing it that way um but there i mean there are large corporations that are capitalizing yes 100 percent. and you know come, come july 1st they're just gonna push that right back into the back <laughs> of the store we've been talking about that all weekend but uh um at the bookstores i've been noticing that all the books i see and they're like oh i have that one i have that one that's on my tbr and so it's kind of cool to to see that from my perspective and being and no i'm just trying to share it just force it on all my uh my gay and straight friends including you i've been trying to get you to read a couple of these that i'm gonna talk about so hopefully after this video you'll be inspired to read at least one of them i'm inspired to read all of them i just, <laughs> I just haven't so one of those book series is Tamara Samira's Gideon the Ninth and Hera the Ninth, the Locked Tomb trilogy. Book three has not come out yet. I can't wait for it. I finished Hera the Ninth a few months ago, and it became really halfway through the book. It became my, one of my favorite books of all time. It is it is my favorite book of all time. In my top five, it's my number one. It's hard to rank Gideon and Hera now that I've read them both because I feel like they complement each other, and I can't imagine one existing without the other, which seems like that would be like it makes sense for a sequel, but sometimes sequels just aren't as good as the original and i feel like it's yeah it's not the case for this series very similar to blade runner and blade runner 2049 where like you can't imagine a world where they both don't exist because they complement each other um but that book is full of lgbtq plus characters and, and ideas the thing that she includes in this world i really enjoy because it's not just those elements that appeal to this community um or to anybody really it, it's, she built a world that's very sex positive that also doesn't have the stigmas that our world does. So it's like, it's kind of what we were talking about. It, it is that normalized world these characters live in. I feel like it was really well done. Um, another book that's similar to that uh, is Nicholas Eames' The Band series, another trilogy that's about to be finished. Um, book one being Kings of the Wild and book two being Bloody Rose. Um, for those two, I believe Kings of the Wild's got a male-male relationship a marriage it's really cool it's definitely an homage to freddie mercury i i, I almost want to say the husband's name was freddie too the whole book is full of rock and roll easter eggs and homages and things like that um but the main wizard uh he, he's gay he was married to this man uh, who got really sick um and there's just something really interesting about his character to begin with before all that 
And then when you kind of see the crossovers to real life and, and to rock and roll music and, and to Freddie Mercury's life, it's just, it's really cool that he did that um, in a really subtle way that like a lot of people I know completely missed that when they read it. Um, but it was one thing that just really stuck out to me that I, I remember um, in that story, not just because of his sexual preference, but because his character stuck out so much to me. Like I remember him long after reading it and he made a huge impact on me. And in the second book, there's a female, female romance that's like one of my, it's, it's close to Ellie and Dina in terms of like one of my favorites. Um, and it's so good. I can't say who it is between because it's obviously a spoiler. Um, but that book has a really, really genuine uh, female, female romance that I think people might dig if they check it out. If they're into epic fantasy or more tongue in cheek comedy fantasy, it's not like, it's not a comedy. But uh, it's more reminiscent to like a D&D game, captured yep. into a book form. I also, and, if, and on the flip side of that, something a little more serious, um, Arcady Martin's uh, memory called Empire has a phenomenal female-female romance that I can't, again, talk about who it's between because it's a little bit of a spoiler. It's really not, but uh, for the sake of this being spoiler-free so everyone can enjoy, um, that, that is probably one of my all-time favorite um, relationships portrayed in a... Um, in novel form, in a fiction novel form, in sci-fi, I just done in such a cool way that it felt so normalized and natural that it didn't even like cross my mind that it, it was going to be an element to the story. It just automatically was from the moment these two people met, and I absolutely, absolutely loved it. Um, that's what I really want you to read too. After Gideon and Harrow, I think those two are like my. Just give me a list. I'm just gonna get a whole list. Write it down for me. A few other major titles on this list um, that have queer content, I would say. Um, but I won't go into too much detail with because if you've been viewing my channel for a while, I've already kind of talked about these books, not in length. Um, some of them have videos coming out soon about that you'll see me talk about more. But uh, if you're looking for some really great, not necessarily entry level, but just really sincere, well done uh, queer content in not fiction form, I would say Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern is a really great one. That's one of my favorite books. Um, that one is definitely a polarizing book because of the story, but the character work is something that I feel like across the board um, is undeniably well done. And uh, same thing goes for The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, uh, which I recently read a couple months ago and absolutely fell in love with. I actually did the audiobook for that one and the voices he does for all the kids was just like, it was so good. And the male-male relationship in that book will make you cry. Like it's, I, I dare you not to cry. Um, towards the end of that book. It is really wonderful. I absolutely loved it. Um, I am actually doing a video about uh, House in the Cerulean Sea pretty soon that I'm really excited about. I can't say too much about it, but it's pretty fun. It's a themed video. Um, it has something to do with my favorite film director, so I'm really excited about that one coming soon. Another one is Vanished Birds by Simon Jimenez. I'll drop a link down below in the review I did for that book. Um, that one has another great male-male romance that's really great and really sincere. It's a young romance, too. I wouldn't really call it a romance. It's more like a fling, but like the character himself, like it, it's just an aspect to his character. It's not really about the romance, it's about like who he is and, and how he became the person he becomes at the end of the book. And I just absolutely loved it. Uh, I found it very moving and very well crafted and done. Other than the Locked Tomb trilogy, which I really wanted you to read, Tem Samir has quickly become one of my favorite authors of all time. Uh, another book that I really can't wait for you to get to uh, is a great queer sapphic vampire Dracula retelling written by Sam Gibson. It's called A Diary of Blood. Uh, I read it a few months ago. It was like a wild card pick that just, just showed up on my on my radar, and I was like, Ooh, "That sounds really great." I was in the Castlevania vibe, and uh, I actually wondered how you found that book. Yeah, it was. I, I want to say it was like some weird Big Brother ad that just came across either my Instagram or my Facebook. But I think about it on Goodreads. I had seen someone post about it because I was looking at books like Castlevania or like um, so that vampires are not my favorite type of content but every once in a while there's there's one story that'll stick out to me um that'll have like the x factor which is why i think that it's funny that you found that over carmilla because i remember when i told <laughs> one i told you about carmilla like five years ago but then you were telling me about this one and i was like oh it reminds me of carmilla and you were like what is that and i was like do you ever listen to a word that i say <laughs> never every word but i'm surprised like because you are such a huge castlevania fan and I know that Carmilla is a character on Castlevania. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm surprised that your Goodreads didn't, you know, I listen to what you say and everything else that you watch and just <laughs> tell you, here, read this. We all know how much our phones are always listening, right? Yeah. It, it was a, uh, a wild card pick that month and I just picked it up. It's pretty short. It's like a novella length. I'm not actually sure if, if it's a novella or a novel. It's really short, though. Uh, I'll double check and put the link down below for um, all these books. But it's a Dracula retelling 
Um, which I hate even saying because it's not really about Dracula at all. It's about his brides, his three brides. Um, it's got female, female. It's got uh, poly, female, female, male, male romance. It's It's got everything. It trigger warning. It has a lot of dark content, um, a lot of emotional and physical abuse, and just, just really hard topics to tackle in a story like that in such a short time frame. But if you're looking for either that kind of content or you want to check out something that is really sincere and well done and written with care, you can definitely tell the author like was very considerate and very aware of what she was writing. Um, it, it just. It was really wonderful. It was it was a surprise because I, I knew it was gonna be good. I'd read nothing but good things about it. But again, uh, vampires are not necessarily. I don't not like vampires. I'm just not drawn to them. The, 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 at least lately, I mean, apparently, I've been looking at my TBR and the shows that I'm watching. I'm like, wow, there's a lot of vampires and a lot of things I'm watching lately. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like there's just a stigma they on vampires since Twilight. That's yeah, it's, just like I can't like. They just put a stake in that. Stigma. <laughs> <laughs> so. Check out Adario Blood. It's really cool. Um, again, it's really dark, so just go into that, go into it knowing that, or being prepared for it. Um, but it basically tells the story of Dracula's three brides and how they sort of um, work together to um, break free from his manipulation. And it's, it's really well done. It's a gorgeous cover art, and it's written in like letter style. I think I have it over here somewhere. It is like absolutely stunning. I love it so much. It's super short. It is kind of novel size, but. Um, it follows Constanta, which is the first bride, or at least the first bride we find out about in uh, this retelling. And uh, she's rescued by, or brought back to life on the brink of death um, by Dracula and is brought to his home and becomes like his first bride, or as far as she knows. And um, from there, she kind of like spends many, many years from it. Kind of had this like, it, it, it felt like Castlevania was really dark, but it had moments of comedy and, and brevity. Um, but also, it was really gothic. And in grim at times too, so I felt like it really captured um, the feel of Carmilla and Bram Stoker's Dracula, but also completely felt like its own thing. I don't feel like you need to have read Dracula um, to enjoy this book. This actually might make you enjoy Dracula a little bit better, to be honest with you. When was this written? Um, recently, this past year, I believe. Oh. I want to say copyright twenty twenty one. She does have a new book coming up that I'm really excited about. She's a super cool author, super active in the community, so definitely check out her Instagram. I'll put that down below as well. But uh, yeah, really dug that one. That was like one of my big ones on this list next to The Locked Tomb, and uh, I want you to check it out at some point. It's really, really cool. So I'd like to do more videos like this, not just when Lisa's visiting. Um, I do love having her here and on the channel, um, but I do try hard to be very, uh, I am a very progressive person, a very active person and very passionate about not just social justice, but also very aware of what's going on in the LGBTQ plus community. Um, I'm, like I said before, I'm blessed to be a part of it through my wife and through my best friend. And uh, I just try to be uh, a good listener and as active as I can, but also trying to consume different content that I feel like makes me um, just a better person in general. And I feel like uh, I'm not perfect and I, I want to make sure that this channel never comes off as uh, ignorance is bliss. It's just something I don't want to ever come off on the Wicked Good Books vibe. I want, you know, I might not get everything right. I might miss a few things. Please, I'm listening. Let me know down below um, if, it, if there's something I should look more into, if there are authors or artists or resources I should check out um, that I could share with the community. Please include them down below. I'd love to, love to hear your thoughts and your words. And yeah, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Uh, I think Lisa has some really cool resources that she's going to give to me that I can include in the bio of this video of where you guys can go to get more involved with the community, as well as not just donations, but resources for information and things of that nature. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks so much for stopping by, as always. And thank you, Lisa, as always, for hanging out with us here with Good Books uh, on my birthday. I wish you weren't going home tomorrow. I wish that we could shoot a thousand more videos like this, and maybe someday soon we can. But uh, I'll let you do the outro on this one. Stay wicked.